Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Casey. Uh, my name is Nate Clark. I'm the park manager over at Pocahontas State Park, and I appreciate the opportunity and the invitation to come and, and speak to you all this afternoon. Um, I'm sure all of you are very familiar with Pocahontas, uh, right in the backyard, uh, 8,000 acres right here in the middle of Chesterfield County. Um, I have been here just a little under two years. I just transferred from another park not too long ago, so I'm still learning the park to some degree and, and certainly learning the community. And with last year with the world turned upside down, it, it made invitations a, or, um, a little more difficult uh, to get out and meet everybody. So this is my first time uh, presenting here in front of the board, and, and I appreciate the opportunity. Um, I prepared a, a short presentation. Um, I'm going to give some basic information about the park, some general information, and then talk about some recent capital improvements that we've been um, some undertaking, uh, some new projects we've had out of, out of the park, and, and then, of course, happy to answer any questions. Um, also brought some information. To feel free to look at that at your leisure. There's uh, a copy of our most recent master plan, which is a 10-year cycle, last updated in 2017. Um, there's also a copy of the 2020 economic impact study that was prepared by uh, Dr. Vince Magnini at Virginia Tech and the um, Pamplin School of Business. Um, and then some general park information and my contact info is in there also. So, um, so I will go ahead and get started. Um, some general information about the park. I imagine a lot of you are familiar with the park already, but we are the largest state park in Virginia at, at just under 8,000 acres. Uh, we stretch from Courthouse Road all the way down to Woodpecker. Um, majority of the park facilities are between beach and courthouse where the pool and the campground and, and most of our, our most visited facilities, our most used facilities, but we do have land all the way down to Woodpecker Road. Um, and in 2019, and you'll notice a couple times in here, I've got both info from 2019 and 2020 because last year, of course, was very different with some facilities closed. So economic impact numbers, revenue numbers, attendance numbers, everything was, was a little different. So 2019 was the last normal year, so to speak, um, for good comparison. So in 2019, we had just under a million visitors. Um, that is the highest visitation in all of Virginia State Parks. Um, so along with being the biggest park in the state, we're also the most visited park in the state. Uh, 2020 last year, and this is calendar year, not fiscal year. 2020, we were 782,000. Um, biggest difference last year was that the pool was closed. Um, so our aquatic, our aquatic complex was closed all of last year because of COVID for all the obvious reasons. Um, we unfortunately will have it closed again this year also. Um, so we saw a significant drop in our attendance because of that. Interesting, last year in the spring, when all the, the restrictions and the stay-at-home orders were really getting ramped up, we saw a huge increase in our trail use. Um, a lot of new folks coming out to the park to use mountain bike trails and hiking trails. And the, the really good thing about that is we're getting new park users. We saw a lot of kids out there who had, had not been able to, to visit the park before for, for whatever reason. Um, so had a lot of new folks out last year. Um, over 500 interpretive programs in 2019 and 17,000 people uh, on the attendance. So the interpretation and education component of our mission is one of the most important things that we do. It's the stewardship values, teaching the future us, we like to say. Um, you know, the junior ranger programs, the creek crawl programs, fishing programs, archery programs, um, night sky, all those things were kind of the traditional campfire programs. I'm sure some of you, as I was when a kid, um, you know, went to some parks, from some federal sites and, and saw a campfire program. And uh, so we do a lot of that. And that's a really important part of our mission is, is instilling those stewardship and environmental education values. Um, over 28,000 volunteer hours in 2019. So our volunteer support, uh, led by Friends of Pocahontas State Park is our biggest advocate. Volunteer support of the park is just tremendous. And that is the highest number in, in the state, um, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's it's gonna be hard to beat 28,000 volunteer hours in a year. Um, so just amazing what our volunteer community is, does for the park and really allows us to present what we have. Um, we wouldn't be able to do the same things without the volunteer support that we have. Um, and then Pocahontas was established as a state park in 1946. We have Civilian Conservation Corps history, um, CCC facilities that date back to the late 30s. Um, but the, the history of the park, um, Virginia State Parks uh, took over the park as a site in 1946. It was in federal hands and some different hands before that. Um, basic rundown of our park facilities. We have uh, the largest campground in the state, um, over 120 sites. Uh, we have yurts and camping cabins within the campground. We are building five new cabins, which I'll talk about in a few minutes and have some good pictures on those. Um, be the first cabins, full service housekeeping cabins that we have in the park. 
Um, the pool and aquatic complex, again, closed last year, will be closed this year also, but that typically sees 40,000 attendants, I think, in the summertime between Memorial Day and, and Labor Day. So it's a very busy, um, very successful and, and good revenue generator, quite honestly. Um, our amphitheater and summer concert series, uh, that was very limited last year. Typically, we do about six to eight concerts a year. Last year, we were only able to do two because of various COVID restrictions. Um, we are getting back into the concert series this year and actually have our first show on Friday night, uh, Memorial Day weekend. The Embers were playing out there, so we're, we're hoping to get back into the concert business a little bit. Um, Visitor Center and Civilian Conservation Corps Museum, that's where all the programs, um, uh, all the interpretive and education programs are, are there. It's the only Civilian Conservation Corps Museum in Virginia State Parks. Um, and we have several parks with CCC history, but we're the only museum in, in the agency. Um, dining halls and historic group, group cabins, CCC cabins, picnic shelters, lakes, um, over 100 miles of trail, multi-use trail, uh, mountain biking, of course, has just exploded in popularity out of Pocahontas over the last several years. So um, trail use is, is probably, probably the busiest aspect of the park and, and gets the most visitors and, and use throughout the year. Um, economic impact, I'm not going to go too heavy into this because I, I left a full report with you all to, to take a look at it at your convenience. Um, but this is Dr. Vince Magnini with the Pamplin School of Business out of Virginia Tech. Um, Dr. Magnini is well known in the hospitality field and, uh, and he will tell you that all of his numbers are vetted and, and he'll back them up. Um, but per his report in 2020, last year, this is again calendar year, uh, $33.5 million impact to the local economy by having Pocahontas State Park here in Chesterfield County. And in 2019, $43.3 million. This is based on a lot of different factors, attendance being the biggest factor. Um, they use attendance versus overnight attendance, and he takes several other things into account, but a uh, pretty significant number, um, especially when you start looking statewide um, and on your, on your return on investment as far as what the agency is putting into the park. Okay, we want to spend a few minutes talking about some recent improvements, some projects that we've got going on at the park. Um, the biggest one, and, and which will end up being the most visible one, is, is our new cabin construction. Uh, we're in the process of building five cabins total, um, actually our completed building. Uh, we've got four three-bedroom cabins and one six-bedroom lodge, and these are, these are nice cabins. Um, these are full housekeeping, um, you know, two bedrooms, full kitchen, I mean, nicer than my house kind of cabins. Um, kind of what you'd expect when you go to, to the beach for a rental, rental facility. Um, Southwood was the contractor, uh, began in the summer of 2019, just before I got here to Pocahontas, um, I guess spring 19 really. Um, $3.75 million project total. This was funded out of the General Assembly session in 2016, uh, capital project bill that, that funded a lot of capital projects throughout the state, and we were the recipient of, of our cabin project. Um, identified in the master plan as being a needed addition to the park. Hopefully this is just the beginning. Um, five cabins is what we, what we could do with the allocated budget. Um, we've got room for more and I fully believe these cabins are going to stay full as soon as we open them up. So hopefully in the future we'll be able to add some more cabins also. Um, so four three bedroom cabins, one six bedroom lodge. Uh, the six bedroom lodge and one of the three bedroom are fully ADA compliant. And we are targeting July 3rd for the opening. A lot of difficulties in the last year, again, with COVID and budget stuff being, you know, we had some projects that were halted. So there was some funding got backed up and it's, I could spend 30 minutes just talking about the challenges of opening these cabins, but, um, but we're looking at July 3rd to get those open. And these are just a couple pictures kind of from the construction process. Uh, bottom left is the lodge. The other ones are the three bedroom. So yes, they are. Um, all of them are on East State Park Road, uh, which is when you enter the park, it's the immediate right that'll take you down towards the, the dining halls and, and the group cabins. Um, and uh, yeah, they're all right there in the lake and there will be some outstanding views. Um, sitting out on the back porch and having your coffee in the morning, uh, especially in the spring and the fall before the leaves really, um, you know, really taking up the view. But yeah, it's a beautiful location. And then these are the finished products. Um, the three bedroom cabin is the one you see on, on the left of the screen and then the six bedroom lodge is, is on the right. So again, this is a great addition to the park. We're really excited to get these facilities open and, and open to, to public use. Um, our pool, so we, we're, we undertook a project this year to replace the white coat, um, the plaster coating on the pool itself. Uh, the last major upgrade to the pool was I think about 16 years ago and most, um, 
most people in the business will tell you about 10 years is the max life for, for the white coat. So, um, so we're in the middle of doing this project right now. Um, we were hoping to have it done a little bit earlier, but since we're not going to open the pool, we're, we told them we're really in no hurry. So you know, we told the contractor to take their time. So we're looking at next month to get this finished. Um, Alcon is the contractor, and this is about a million dollar project that was agency funded. Um, these are some pictures previous um, to the demo. Um, so the, the picture on the left is the activity structure that you see, and, and you can see you know, the needed repair work that, it, that, it, that it, it was in need of. That's a water line that you see. And then, um, so this is the new activity structure that has been installed. Uh, I have not completed the white coat on there yet, but, but a pretty obvious difference. And, and again, this facility is, is so busy and used so much during a typical summer. This is a, this is a great reinvestment for some of our agency funds to, to fix this up. Um, Loop Forest parking lot expansion. This is another one that's pretty visible to the community uh, right off of Courthouse Road. Um, Loop Forest is one of our smaller perimeter lots that is really popular for mountain bikers because of the close proximity to the real popular mountain bike trails up there. So the old parking lot, the old parking lot was built in before the trails were built in. So infrastructure, you know, we built more trails before we were able to catch up with our parking lot. So um, parking lot was always busy. It was hard to get in and out. We actually had to, um, to restrict some use last year with social distancing and capacity issues. Um, so we, we were in need of a larger facility. The former parking lot had about 30 spaces. The new lot has about 100, um, including ADA spaces and a better sight line for Courthouse Road, so, so improved safety for uh, ingress and egress. Um, the coolest thing about this project is that this was all community funded. So there's no agency money, there's no general funds that went into this project. Um, Friends of Pocahontas State Park and RVA Moore, which is a local IMBA uh, mountain bike chapter, really kind of spearheaded this charge. And then we had an individual, a mountain bike rider and a community a member who stepped up and donated $100,000 um, from personal money and essentially put a challenge out to us that he would match anything up to $100,000 that the friends were able to raise. And um, in a relatively short time period, they were able to raise it and actually exceeded it a little bit. So we raised a total of $210,000 and again, all donated money, which is just the coolest thing about this project. Um, Brock Construction was the contractor, he's out of Farmville. Um, so on April 24th, we opened the lot uh, just about, about a month ago. Um, since then, over 7,600 cars have been in there, and we've got a traffic counter that, that we tally that, so it's probably not an exact number, but it's, it's pretty close. Um, been, been really busy and getting a lot of really good community feedback and comments on the improvements, so, um, so we're real excited about that. It was much needed. And that is the footprint of the new parking lot and picture from our ribbon cutting on the 24th. And then the last one, this is a little smaller scale project that, that we had a, a kind of a unique opportunity this year. Our, our, budget was, our budget was very weird, for lack of a better terms, this year. We, we took some significant budget cuts back in September because we're so, as an agency, we're so dependent on the revenue that we take in. We're about 60-40 between general funds and revenue generated funds. Um, the summer went on and actually our revenues were better than we thought, so we had some surplus at the end of the fiscal year and we were able to complete a campground paving project um, in the top loop, which is the older loop of the campground, was showing lots of signs of age and deterioration and potholes and spider cracks. Um, so this was funded through agency fiscal year surplus, about $90,000, and they just finished up last week. Um, and again, just some great improvements. There's a couple spots through there. You, you could rattle your, uh, rattle your feelings out driving through there. And that's all I've got. Um, contact information for me there, and of course, happy to answer any questions the board may have. I don't have any, any comments, board members. I don't have any questions, Mr. Chairman, but I did note that today we received uh, the Parks and Recreation uh, Sports Tourism Master Plan. It calls for increased investment down there. And so we're looking forward to uh, continuing with you and making that a destination for families in Chesterfield and around the region uh, for many, many years to come. I think um, uh, it's still kind of a best kept secret for whatever <laughs> reason. And uh, so we're, we're hoping to open it up even more. Thank Great. you. Yep, thank you. Yeah, we, we've had lots of good partnerships in the past with, with County Parks and Rec and hope to continue that. Mr. Chair. Great. Uh, Kevin. Yeah. Uh, the, the new um, lodges that are going to be for rent, um, when will they be up on your website for people to take a look at uh, booking? 
And Hopefully, do you have any idea what the price point is going to be? Um, I should have brought that with me. I couldn't tell you offhand. I think the lodge is going to be somewhere around a thousand, thirteen hundred a, a week. Um, mm -hmm. Probably don't quote me on that. I, I might be, I might be low on yeah, that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we're hoping the weekend of July fourth, July third, to have them open for reservations. I, I think they're going to book up quick. I agree. I agree. Excellent. Other comments? Thank you so very much for that. Excellent presentation. Look forward to uh, being out there. I remember just a few years ago, Supervisor Ellswick and I joined Governor McDonald as we unveiled the, the uh, ramp ways for veterans, disabled veterans. The governor came down, and so we were pleased to be there. It was a warm day, though, but we enjoyed yeah. being out in the park. It's always wonderful to be in the park. It's a beautiful park, and it's a great place to go. And that's the beauty of having that. And here in Chesterfield County, our citizens can unveil themselves to the beauty of nature and all it offers. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to get away uh, every now and then. Mm -hmm.